We're back in the mile high, and after two days off, there is still a buzz in Denver with the home team taking a 1-0 lead. The Nuggets now 9-0 this postseason at Ball Arena. Thanks in no small part to that man. Nikola Jokic took control of this game in the opening quarter without taking a shot until the final minute. And he has the Nuggets up one to nothing after his ninth triple-double. An uncharacteristic game one performance from Jimmy Butler who had a postseason low 13 points without a single free throw attempt in game one. What's the adjustment tonight for Miami? Welcome to NBA TV's Game Time Live at the Finals presented by YouTube TV. We are on the floor here at Ball Arena. It is great to have you with us. Once again, I'm Matt Weiner here with the Hall of Famers, four-time champion Shaquille O'Neal, Grant Hill, Charles Barkley right over there. Miami needs to make adjustments tonight and may need to think about who they're going to play and how much. And for more on that, let's take it backstage. Well, we'll get, we'll get to Jared in a moment. Uh, first, we do have some pressing business, and that has to do with you and Shaq. It's the uh, countdown to game two, which is coming in about two hours time. But that's not the most important clock to some of us here on the set. The vacation clock is in play. Oh, yeah. Just under six hours for the two of you. Six hours? I tell you what, man. That's an estimate. Uh, that's OK. We know this is the last time I'm going to be working. So big fella. I just want to say, Chuck, I'm not going to miss you. <laughs> hey, I'll hey. call you once a month just hey. to check in. Hey. You know, I love you. You know, they're buying people out when you work with a damn fool now. You're right. <laughs> 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 you are the big brother that I've ever had. And it's going to be a great vacation. Hey. But, you know, I don't stop, Greg. You know, I still got stuff yeah, to do. You like so. to do stuff yeah. all the time. Hey, man, got to work, brother. Well, Matt, Matt, what about us? Well, Grant has like 15 jobs, so he has but, no but vacation. We got to keep going. I keep working. Okay. Okay. No, you're done, too. Matt's got to keep going. Yeah. I'll be six and seven, game six and seven. Hey, let me tell you something. If there's a six and seven, I might meet you back here because there ain't going to be no six and seven. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's take you backstage to Jared Greenberg, who has an update on the Miami Heat and personnel tonight for game two. Jared. All right, Matt, within the next 15 minutes, we expect Tyler Hero to be on the game court, warming up just as he did before game one. But also, like game one, Tyler Hero has officially been ruled out of tonight's game as he continues to recover from right hand surgery. I have been told by people who were in the building yesterday that Tyler Hero was a full participant in heat practice. He looked, quote unquote, amazing and did everything he normally would do to get ready for a game. They're just not ready to put him in. He is expected to make his return to the lineup for the first time in nearly two months, Wednesday for game three back in Miami. Mm. The Heat will have Caleb Martin available tonight. He's been battling an illness. However, I have learned within the last hour that Miami is expected to make a lineup change going back to the lineup. They rode throughout most of the NBA playoffs going big with Kevin Love back in at the starting power forward position, Matt. Wow, Jared, that is uh, big news. Kevin Love has been a DNP the last three games of the playoffs going back to the Boston series and here in game one. Shaq, what do you think this means for Miami tonight? I'm going to give him a little bit more size. He has a stretch four, you know, where they call he can go out and you know if, 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 if the Joker is ever going to switch to him, keep him away from the bats because he is a threat for the three. But you know, I'm still anxious to see how they're going to defend the Joker. What what are they going to do? There's some good things they did in that fourth quarter. They're probably going to capitalize off that. But like you said, Matt, it's a tall order, and we'll see if this works. But I don't think they should double right away. I think they should mix it up, you know, make Joker score four or five backers in a row, get ten points. You don't want him to pick your parkers. Joker's one of us. He's going to get his 27. He's going to get his 27 aggressively or non-aggressively, but you don't want to let him get the others involved early, especially here at home. So I'm anxious to see how they play him tonight. As for Kevin Love, he's become almost exclusively a three-point shooter since he arrived in yeah. Miami, and he shot it just under 37% here in the postseason. What can it do for Miami tonight? Just uh, spread the floor more. I mean, he's a bigger body to go against Joker. So, number one, that's going to help in the passing lanes. But the main thing, he can pull the Joker away from the basket. That should help Bam. That should help Jimmy uh, get to the basket more because they didn't shoot any free throws basically the last game. So, that that's the only difference. But, man, the one thing about this Nuggets team, they don't let you make mistakes. Uh, I think it'll help because, you know, the, the way these teams play defense now, they switch everything. The Joker, the Joker just sit there like Peyton Manning last game, like, well, let me see what that mismatch is. And he played a quarterback the first five, six, seven plays of the game. 
Uh, but Kevin's going to have to make some threes. And that's the only reason he would be in the game and to spread the floor. So he's going to have to, to me, probably make five or six threes if Miami's going to be successful. You know, Miami was just five of 16 on wide open threes in game one. They shot it at about 48% in the Boston series. On and, and they had a lot of open threes, too. That was what was interesting. Even Max Struess, 0 for 9 from 3, 0 for 5 on wide open threes. And you talk about Kevin Love, just the threat of him out there yes, is important. Yes, you got to play him. But, I, you know, look, we don't typically say this about a Kevin Love on the other side. But I thought Miami, you talk about taking advantage of mismatches or mistakes. You had Vincent guarding Aaron Gordon early, and they were able to go inside yes. Aaron Gordon using his size. So at least Kevin Love will give some size and, and maybe prevent Gordon from getting off early. But I like this to match the size and physicality, have Love out there with Adebayo to start the game. Yeah, and I and I it was really funny when people to, to talk about perception and reality. I did a radio show for one of my friends here in Denver yesterday, and he said, you know, Miami's not going to shoot that bad. I said, did you actually even look at the stats for the game? He said, no, I didn't look at the stats. I said, the Nuggets didn't shoot. The, they, the Heat actually shot the ball better than. Plus the, 15 on threes yes. in game one. Yeah. So this notion that everything Miami's going to shoot, I said, the Nuggets going to shoot the ball better. They were the team that hadn't played in 10 days. Yeah. So this notion that. Everybody gonna start making threes. I said, man, the Nuggets, they did not shoot the ball well. So this hope that Miami just gonna start making threes and gonna change the whole outcome of the game, I don't agree with. Both teams shot well below their postseason averages in terms of three-point percentage. One of the differences for Miami was the free throws in an NBA playoff record two free throw attempts. And the fact that they weren't going to the rim, and some of that is Jimmy Butler. Yeah, you know it's interesting. I mean, they were driving, but they were driving to pass. Yes. They weren't driving to score. Jimmy Butler was getting into the paint, but wasn't even looking at the basket. You don't know if it was he just was being tentative, if he was maybe feeling the game out. He's or always he, or, patient. Or, or he felt, you know what? Patient. The size was giving me problems, but he's got to be more aggressive. He, I, I he's got to look to hunt his shot. Shots like that, get into the paint, be efficient. And of course, get to the line, put some pressure on that defense of Denver. You got to draw some fouls, and Jimmy Butler one of the best in the game. I, in doing I think that. sometimes when you're a star, you got to be more selfish, and Jimmy's got to be more selfish. Uh, he's, you know, Kenny talked about it. He's one of the most patient guys when it comes to offensively. He never rushes or anything like that. But when you when you're the guy. You can't be unselfish. You got to be more selfish. You got to be more aggressive. That's the depression and responsibility to go with being the best player. Uh, Bam did his part. Jimmy Jimmy cannot have less than 20. Right. He has to have 20 to 25 for this team to even be competitive, in, in my opinion. And when you look at the Heat and them only having two free throws, you can take that two ways. One, they were not aggressive, or they weren't getting any calls. I'm going to go with A, Matt. They weren't that aggressive, like you said, Grant. Getting in the lane, looking for plays. They just need to be aggressive. In the fourth quarter, it was a little bit too late. They got more aggressive. So and, hopefully they'll be a little bit more aggressive to Matt, start the game today. And, Matt, they really got to be aggressive because – the threat of Kevin Love is going to make the Joker have to come out. You can't leave Kevin Love open to shoot. So he's going to automatically pull the Joker away from the basket. So that to me, Jimmy, Bam, Caleb Martin, all those guys, they got to be, uh, uh, you know, even Kyle Lowry. They, they, the lane should be a lot open for the, for the Heat tonight with Kevin Love out there. It'll be interesting to see Butler's approach. He was a minus 10 in game one. That was the worst of any player. And I, I've often compared him to the Joker in that I can't think of two stars in the league who care less about shot attempts. But sometimes, to your point, sometimes he's yeah, going to have to there, be a little but, but, but there's a difference. The Joker got more guys who can score on his other, and, and they sure. were getting they were getting those guys going, getting uh, you know. But Jimmy can't be. You got to be selfish sometimes. Well, you got to be selfish, and you got to impact winning. See, the Joker can impact winning, not even taking a shot. We talked in game yep. uh, after game one that first quarter, took one shot late in the first quarter, but he was impacting yep. with his play, his ball movement, his assisting. Jimmy wasn't getting that done, in part because guys yeah. weren't hitting shots, yeah. but he's yeah. got to have an Im Im impact on yeah. this game. Yeah. He's got to do it early, Chuck. The Joker can get – Jimmy's not going to win the game with assists. Right. Jimmy's going to win the game. Like, the Joker can win a game with assists. That's how great he is. Jimmy is going to – He's going to have to score because realistically, the Heat don't have but two guys 
that gonna get you 20 a night. That's him and Bam. So they have to get a minimum of 20 each. Now, obviously, Martin's important, Gabe Vincent's important, but your two stars, they got to get 20. And when you say score, I, I don't mean score sporadically. He needs to score like he scored in the first two series, the, the 30s and, you know, the 40s and even, you know, yep. the 50-point game he had. needs to be super aggressive. Chuck, I agree with you because, you know, if you're going to let the game come to you and you're going to give it to the others and they're not going, you got to get yourself late, going. You know, it you seems to me going. that their bigger problem is on the other end of the floor. It's dealing with that guy who had the 14 assists in game one. That's a record for a first-time finals participant. It's a record yeah. for a center in but, the but NBA Matt, finals. If, if, if you go back and look at the stupid Boston Celtics are just going to stand around and go one-on-one. -on -one. The Denver Nuggets play, to me, they do a lot like the Warriors. Mm -hmm. There's so much ball and body movement. Yep. And let me tell you something. I was never a great defender, but that's the hardest thing in basketball to guard, ball movement and body movement. Yep. And the Joker, man, he's he back there. He's like a great quarterback. And then if you let the Joker shit, sit up. Shit. If you let the Joker sit at the top of the key with no ball fetcher, <laughs> he can make any passes run. I'm hey. sorry, NBA hey. Hey. hey, hey, if you let him do that at the top of the key, too, it's going to be hard to stop. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting, Chuck. You said earlier about Denver. You know, I, I covered – five of their home games in the first two rounds against Minnesota and against Phoenix and of course watched against the Lakers game one might have been their worst home performance this postseason so everybody's talking about what Miami can do better yeah Denver can be better they work then I said that like five minutes no, ago no I'm, you didn't go ahead you, Grant. I, 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 say, I say everybody said Denver no, no you didn't no. go, go but, ahead but Grant. Matt, you said something like it Thank no, you but I'm saying they, the, the nine days of rest not being in rhythm yep. you know I expect them to come out and be better I agree the with offensive that. End. Miami's a team that doesn't let you get out and transition. But the and also, too, only six offensive rebounds. You got the size advantage of 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 of, of, of uh, Denver. You got to pound them on the glass there. And they didn't do that there in game one. But what makes them good is they didn't settle for the three like most teams do. Right. Even though they didn't shoot the ball well, they said, okay, Aaron Gordon, you go get to the lane joker you know making those great passes and they're able to you know play different styles of basketball remember 20 of their 29 first quarter points were in the paint when joker was identifying smack those me on the hand Matt. down low smack you in the hand diesel said a bad word <laughs> i'm sorry i didn't hear anything i don't know what you're talking about oh my god that was hilarious you know what suspend me for game three <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go to miami